Hello, my fellow car modelers, and how are you doing today? I am sure that you all have noticed that uh, over the past few weeks, there was a particular series that I had been working on over the past couple of years, an adventure in building a model car, where we were building the Monogram 66 Malibu Flip Nose. If you are watching this, obviously, I have returned the series, and each episode is now going to have this little foreword in it explaining why it was gone and why I'm doing the series and I'm going to bring it back. The reason why is that I don't think many of you understood why I was doing that series and what the purpose of this channel is. When I started this channel, I did not want to be like all the others, not saying that they're bad. I wanted to do something different. I was not going to be a build channel. I will do builds, but I'm not going to be a build channel. I wanted to be a model car hobby information channel and tip channel. So the whole idea, as was stated in the very first episode of an adventure of building a model car, was the reason behind the series was to just have a kit that I would work on through time to use as doing tips. So if you look at the episodes, they're not so much about building that particular model. It's about showing you tips in building a model car, my way of building a model car. It will not be something that I work on all the time. I will do other episodes on other subjects and I will build other models. I am not continually working on this 66 Malibu. This brought some criticism and misunderstandings where I would literally have people so enraged that I wasn't constantly working on it and wanting the rest of this series to continue on that they would threaten to write the channel off and unsubscribe. Well, I'm going to tell you this. That's not a threat that's going to shake me up. If you want to unsubscribe, by all means do. I'm going to continue on. That is why I pulled the series. I'm bringing it back for all of you. It is going to continue on and I will work on episodes as I see fit. Could take a couple of years before it's all done. And when it's all done, you're going to have a nice whole play set to watch from beginning to end. But if you're following it and anticipating the next episode and you're trying to build the same car along with me, I, I'm sorry. That's not what its intentions were. I'm not going to do it all the time. I want to do it in my time as I see fit. I have other things I want to do. Please respect that. It's not about the build of this particular car. It is about the tips and information that I'm giving you. That was my intention. Now you know. Let's continue on and let's enjoy an adventure in building a model car. Hope you enjoy it. Well, hello my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Well, guess what? We're going to get back into an adventure in building a model car. Yes, we've been away from this for a while. And that was like back at episode 22, I think it was. That was like the sixth part. We covered painting up the transmission. Well, we're going to be jumping back onto the engine there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I painted up the engine and got the intake manifold all set on there and the valve covers and what we did with the oil pan and getting it ready to get onto the detail. So in this episode, we're going to cover all of that, getting that engine all done with the paint and some of the stuff onto it and then getting it all detailed and everything and then we're going to get right on to part seven of an adventure of building model car the engine the be the the, the third the second part of the, and so we're going to be three parts that are the engine but yeah you'll get it, it, it it's cool you'll like it So the little rig that I set up for painting up this block is I went ahead and drilled a hole in the back because of course that won't be seen after we get it all assembled and I'm not worried about getting paint on that area so much. And I placed a plastic toothpick and then I placed it into a set of my forceps like so, so that when I can put it down, let me show you here, kind of going by hand here, I can lay it down to dry kind of off of a surface but still sitting in the upright position uh, kind of using the hook of the forceps 
to keep everything nice and flat, wanting everything to settle correctly. I don't know, my little way of doing it. But that's how I can do it, and then I can pick it up, and I can spin it around when I'm painting. So I'm going to paint this white, and then I'm going to paint this Chevy engine orange. So I pulled out of my old paint stash. I've got some old Krylon flat white. I'm going to first base coat this engine block with just so that it will help the orange pop a little better because I'm actually going to use Chevy engine orange high temp enamel paint you know that I painted actual engines with because why not use the actual stuff to get the correct color I can't seem to find it too well I haven't been pleased with what I found in the hobby shops with that orange and uh, it's just what I have on hand I got tons of that stuff but we know especially right now in the summer and it's a bit humid it's going to take forever for that stuff to dry and sometimes it has a tendency with this gray primer to kind of go pull back from all the creases and corners and stuff like that and the white will kind of help it not show so bad it will show a lot more through the gray, let's say. So we're going to base it white right now. And I'm going to be painting everything, including the oil pan, because I want to have white on the oil pan for the color that I'm eventually going to do. I'll probably get some orange on there. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Get kind of a light mist coat on there. let it sit and we'll put another coat on it all right so I went ahead and put the second coat on there and it's all dried it's a uh, just a flat white just a little undercoat I, I used uh, again the Krylon flat white and now I'm going to go ahead and use Rust-Oleum which is basically the same company as Krylon so we're gonna go ahead and spray this on there and uh, hopefully we get some good coverage and it looks right. So let's do this. Here we go. Shaking it up real good. Okay, here we go. Enough of the ridiculousness. Let's do a test run. So I'm just dusting it on there. Don't want to get it too heavy. You also want to get on the inside here. Don't ever forget this. Sometimes I forget it. But when you get that intake manifold, you're still going to have all the little nooks and crannies of the intake manifold there that you're gonna see engine color. So sometimes you forget to paint in there thinking you're putting a manifold on there, but you need to get that covered. Cause then it looks, well, silly. So there's my first coat. We're gonna let this set and uh, we gotta get this side too. So we're gonna let that sit and we will see how it turns out. We've got all the paint coverage on there that we need. Actually one coat did just fine. It's usually hard to do a mist coat with a spray can. That's why a lot of people like to use airbrush, and I would suggest it too. But you can see here that uh, we got pretty good coverage, and doing that white base helps with not having that separation happen and all the detail lines and on the edges that sometimes happens with enamels. So we've got all the orange that we need. It looks like it's all good. So we're gonna move back to the model room with this and we're gonna to have to let this sit and dry for a little bit. So we're back in the model room and uh, the orange paint turned out great. So just to show you why I do a setup like this, you could see when I was painting it that it's so much easier to hold, but also putting it in the forceps like that, you get that nice angle there to where it sets perfect when you can put it down it's drying and it won't touch anything and also you can also see how much brighter the orange is by putting down a base coat of white first so it kind of just pops that orange a little better and just it just visually looks so much better as you can see compared to the engine that it was just shot over primer same color everything that's all the difference that white will make so now that we got this all dried I'm going to go ahead and take it off of there. What I usually like to do is I take my little vise and I like to stick it into the vise, keeping it on the toothpick, and I make my own little engine stand. That kind of makes it a bit easier to work on. I'm going to set that over on the side here. So now we're all ready to go to start assembling this engine and doing the detail on it. And what we've got here is all the parts that we're going to use out of the kit for this engine and we have right here what we showed in the last episode of uh, the adventures of building a model car is the transmission I just got that set in here the bell housing 
the headers that are kind of set for going through side pipes. We're going to still use that side pipe thing. The alternator that came off the chrome tree. We've got the fan and behind the fan is molded on is the belt and the lower pulley. We have another belt that with some pulleys and I believe that's shoots off to the side for the alternator. We've got the two parts for the oops let's move these back in place. The two parts for the intake manifold and we've got the finned valve covers, the carburetors right here, and the velocity stacks with the screen in there that go on top of the carburetors. This is all the kit parts we're going to use. And then, of course, here is the engine plate and the timing chain cover and water pump. All that going to be still needing to be painted. Haven't decided what color everything in the engine bay is going to be. It's probably going to be black, so we haven't painted it yet. This isn't going to be put onto our engine assembly till we are ready to put it into the whole subframe. We'll get to that later. Right now what we want to do is put this engine together to where we can wire it up and do what detail we want to do. And I think I'm just going to go with a little bit of carburetor detail with maybe some lines going into the carburetors, maybe some linkage. Got some neat stuff to show you on that. And I want to do spark plug wires. So when I was gathering up all the engine parts out of this kit, I discovered something. I was missing the distributor. Well, sometimes that can be a good thing because maybe the kit distributor isn't really that great, especially coming from these older kits. And it gives you a chance to go rumbling through your parts box. And so I went to the old trusty parts box and came up with the perfect distributor. Check this one out, guys. It is... Just the perfect Chevy distributor, period, correct, for the 70s. It looks like a good points distributor with the two hold downs for the cap and the little door there to adjust your points. So I was pretty pleased with this. And another thing that's really good and what I'm looking for in a nice distributor when I'm wanting to do especially spark plug wires, which we are going to do on this, is have very good spacing and a nice area there for drilling our holes to put our spark plug wires. Now I'm going to show you what I do but to begin with I like to have all of these nubs you know for the the spark plug wires to go onto the cap. I like them to be very nice size. They raised up really good and they're nicely spaced. There's good room to work and there's two different ways to go about this is I will sometimes try to replicate a boot and if it'll slide over these I'll just use those for placement or sometimes I'll just shave them all down and when you do that it still leaves the mark of where these were at you can see that in the plastic and it gives you a good point to drill so we're going to investigate what's going to work out best for our model and uh, we'll go over that but I was really pleased to find that so we're going to use that not out of the kit. Now that we're all set and we've got all our parts, the next thing I want to work on is getting that intake manifold painted. What I would like to do with this intake is I want to give it that aluminum look, but kind of, you know, old. I don't want it to look like a fresh, brand new intake on there. Remember, we're trying to make this car look a little weathered and used. So we're going to grime it up a little bit. Mostly the engine, we're going to grime them up a little bit, and we'll get to that. But Sometimes when aluminum is uh, been on a hot engine, cools down, and it gets a little weathered, we start to get kind of an uh, oxidation. And I'm going to show you how to kind of replicate that, what I do to replicate that. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot some primer on that, and then I'm going to shoot with an aluminum color that I like to use. I actually will use this uh, um, paint that I actually paint real intake manifolds with when they're kind of grungy and all that and I want them to look brand new. And that'll get us a good look and then we'll weather it from there. So I'm going to go out to the garage and get that all painted. And real quick before I go out there and shoot some color on these parts, I'm going to show you what I do to get everything all handled, I guess is the best way to say it. So, you know, it's it's handy. Go ahead and use my medical forceps. I, you can find these at automotive swap meets or at hobby shops and you can order them online. Get yourself a bunch of these. These are handy. You can see by how much paint's on these, I use the heck out of them. But these are some of the greatest tools to have. 
and uh, I take a plastic toothpick and I find somewhere where it will hold real well as you can see right there and I uh, go ahead and uh, get it all rigged up so that I can shoot some paint on there and move it around because again you don't want to get paint all over your hands because you go to work and people think you did your fingernails and you look silly and did a bad job at it I'm gonna go paint and to show you real quick this is what I'm using just some VHT engine paint I painted headers and other parts on an engine a while back and it happens to be a flat aluminum and I've used this stuff since you know I have it laying around so it's okay to use this stuff on models it paint is paint right well this will get me the look that I'm looking for because it does really have this great aluminum look and this is the paint I used on uh, basically the exhaust manifolds on this engine on my Chevelle that I had a while back this will get us our look now I said I was going to primer these, but I really didn't. I just shot that paint directly onto the plastic, and you see there's no ill reactions. Again, it's just an enamel paint. And being a flat paint, it dries really quick. But uh, just to let you see here, in the sunlight, out in my driveway, we got ourselves a really good look. We got ourselves a really good look. So... You can see I get underneath and all around. You want to make sure you get good coverage, even on areas that you think are going to be laid down and not seen. You want to get under there because you got those edges. And when you get it glued on to the engine block and the heads, you'll find that uh, some of the plastic color will show through if you don't catch those edges really well. So I get everywhere. And again, with this, because the look I'm going for, you want that rough kind of cast aluminum look. If you hold it a good distance, you want it to have a little rough look. We're not putting a gloss paint job on these, obviously. So that's how it turned out. Now let me show you how I do to put a little oxidation on it. So basically what I did, I just put it in a little box here and put it on the floor. And I'll tell you why I got it on the floor. Because I'm going to take some old Krylon flat white. And I'm going to just want to be kind of a good distance. So you put it on the floor and you get it all going. And I'm just going to shoot it from up here in just little spits. A little, just a little split. It's kind of not misting like I really want. That's why you kind of hold it above and just rain over it, just mist over it like that. And it'll give you that kind of oxidized look. If you can see there. Just a little bit. And you know what? If you do it a little bit too much, you can go ahead and take your base color used, the silver, and kind of spritz over that and it might calm it down a little bit. I'm I'm okay with this. It, I kind of didn't want the spots to be so big. I didn't get the misting I want. Sometimes even an airbrush would work, but we're not going to bust out an airbrush for this. And that's pretty much how I get my kind of oxidized aluminum look. So we're back from the garage. Got the intake manifold all painted. Got that little bit of oxidation look on there. Uh, the speckles are kind of a little larger than I would have liked but if you can see it there it gives it that look it's kind of tarnished and then later on we're going to go in there and probably do some fuel stains and other things and grunge it up once the engine's all put together and that's when we'll do the weathering but it pretty much got the look I want like I said you know sometimes the best paint to use to get your effects right and metals and things like that besides what I show you with the testers metalizers is Go to your local parts store and just get some engine paints like the you know paints that are for painting aluminum intake manifolds that's what this was it was a dull aluminum and what the heck so the way i look at it is you know if it's gonna work on the real thing why not on little cars right it's the look we're going for we want it to look like an intake manifold that's aluminum and well it looks like an intake manifold that's made out of cast aluminum so let's put it a little bit together here real quick what's cool about these I always like this thing is it it pretty much snaps together I mean we're gonna glue it but it holds together pretty good this is such a cool intake manifold one of my favorites that's what I was saying this kit was just filled with great parts that's why I always bought them up just to use and raid parts for other models but that is an excellent high-rise manifold something that was really popular in the 70s even today on a lot of uh, race cars but in the 70s, this was just a huge thing to put on your big block. And uh, that is the look we're going for.
So we've got that pretty well set. Next what we're going to do is we're going to glue it all together and move on to the next part. And today I'm going to be using some CA glue and uh, let's see what we got going here. I'm going to put my CA glue over on this side. Okay and to start off you got to make sure that we're going to be going in the right direction. This right here shows the thermostat housing so that's obviously going to go to the front being a Chevrolet and the hole for the distributor obviously for a Chevrolet would be in the back. So I'm going to put this bottom part on first. I'm just going to take a little bit of CA glue and just dab it on the bottom here on these two pickup points or little knobs here to problem with my CA glue getting old I got strings you got can't have those glue strings I don't know if you saw that and that gets on paint and stuff and wrecks things so this is just gonna go right on there and remember I showed how we got it all planed and leveled and look at how nice that fits on there and you see what I mean when you want to paint on the other underside you know you don't want that black showing because again you can kind of see in the areas that uh, touch the heads and the flange there of the intake manifold if you didn't paint underneath there you might have on the edges there some of the plastic color showing and that'll ruin the effect of the model so there we go we're gonna go ahead and put this portion on the top half of the plenum as it's called just gonna put it on the the pins and uh, and you can see it's not fully cured yet and moved around a bit. So we're going to let that glue set up and uh, then we'll move on to the next part. And one thing that I want to cover is I know there's going to be some guys say this. Lots of times you want to scrape the paint on the areas that are contacting with glue. And that is very true. But I have found this is kind of a low stress area. I'm not going to really concern myself that much with it, so I know you guys are going to comment, hey, you should scrape that paint off that was on the engine block under there. But, you know, I got enough glue on those two pins that came down and the whole area. I had already kind of hit that with my X-Acto knife, so there's enough contact in there of plastic. So it is true, you kind of want plastic to, and plastic to touch. No paint in between to get a really, really good contact. But... I can tell you right now that thing is on there and it'll take some force to pop it off. Okay fellow modelers, so I went ahead and got the oil pan all painted. I wanted to go for kind of a goldish look. I just went ahead and used Model Masters brass and uh, yep, it's brush painted. You know me, I love that Model Masters and I brush painted and no strokes or anything. Got very good coverage on there. And I could control it and get my lip real good and nice straight line there. And, you know, you could go ahead and mask all this off, but I, I just wanted to go ahead and do that with the brush painting. I, I just like that. And we take a look at the finished bottom here. And I see a few thin spots with the orange showing through. Again, it would have been nice to put a base coat on there, but I was kind of in a hurry. I just wanted to get that on there. We're going to be griming it up a little bit anyway, so we can get that those two little areas covered. But we got really good coverage. You see, there's no seam line. It all worked out good. We've got good coverage of the brass on there. I'm liking the look of it. I think we got the look really well on that one. So next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint the oil filter here. I got to look around and see what kind of stickers I have, but uh, I'll come up with a color on that depending on what sticker I have because I'm going to put, um, you know, either Pennzoil or something from the day. I want to try to find a retro sticker that will work on there to depict an oil filter of the day and uh, paint it the proper color accordingly. And then also we're going to go ahead and use some metalizers. I'm going to paint up that starter a bit, give the car a good look. I think this stuff is going to be pretty visible in that tubular front chassis there. So we want this all to look really good. I think I might go under here with some, uh, you can see I got a little bit of runoff here. Again, an area to grime. My paint was a little too thin there. So it kind of went up into here on the cracks. But again, we can use that to our advantage. I can grime that up a little bit. But I think I'm going to go in here and also hit these freeze plug areas. Since there's the freeze plug detail, why not hit those with a, either a silver or another brass? I think because I did this with the brass, I'm going to hit those with silver. Just again to give a bit of a contrast. You know me with contrasting. I like the word. That's why I say it. I've got 
all the freeze plugs painted but this one, so I thought I'd show you my little technique. I am using metalizer titanium. I wanted it to be a little bit darker silver than putting silver in there. Just, you know, because, again, the engine's old. Uh, the uh, steel freeze plugs would be a bit tarnished at this point. I'm using a 5-0 brush it's kind of big I actually have thinner brushes but this one is brand new and it's got a good point to it so I just take a little bit and you can see how that one looks and I just really lightly dab in there and with it being slightly thinned you you can kind of let it flow into the crevice a little bit and it's just best to get in in there once with a nice dot and of course that one's not as nice the one on camera is not as nice as the one I did right before it because I'm camera shy and I'm nervous and I don't want all, all of you fellow modelers out there laughing at me. So let's try it again. We're going to just do a little dab in there. So let's take a look at how I did with the painting of the starter. I just got some basic metalizer colors on there. Kind of changed up a few. Used about three of them. Different grades of uh, basically silver and grays. Just to give it a... Uh, a look. I uh, like I imagine because of the way this whole front end setup is on this model, I'm sure a lot of this stuff is going to be uh, very visible. So I just wanted to look the best it can. Pan's all done. Looks pretty good. Again, that seam line is gone. No putty. And there you see my Valvoline oil filter. And uh, I just painted it white. So let's flip it around now. Now, why is that sticker upside down? Well, I did the, uh, the decal upside down because they would print them that way so that the on the shelf, the oil filter sat on, I guess, the open end, you know, that goes into the engine. So they would always do the graphics upside down. Once it's up into the car, they would look upside down. So that's why I did that. So there's my look. I just dug through my decal box and I found a little Valvoline decal and stuck it on there. There's the engine so far. You get a good look at that intake and the uh, little bit of dusting of the white to give it that oxidized look. So there we go. On to the next step. What is this that you say? What's Lucas C doing? He's looking at instructions? Oh, eh, you know, sometimes no. eh, you might have to take a peek at the instructions get an idea of what you're doing and then I discovered something uh, the missing part the missing distributor well it's a good thing that I went ahead and looked for something else because it looks like what it used was a magneto type distributor or something really basic but it looks on these instructions so I wouldn't have wanted to use that anyways so that's one thing in this case that kind of stinks the distributor so thank goodness for parts box remember kids always keep your parts don't go throwing those away when you're done with the model you throw them in a box and years later you might come across a need for it so always keep your parts you can see right here i did my wash black wash to enhance the fins on the valve cover and you can see the ss427 on there really good when you do this and i covered this back washing in my last video about the detailing of chrome bumpers and grills that is a, a really good technique to bring up uh, the detail in chrome valve covers and such. And here you get a good look of the aluminum effect I tried to get with the intake manifold and dusting it with the white to give it that little bit of aluminum corrosion. Okay, now to the carburetors. Uh, what we're going to do with these is we're basically using the kit carburetors. They're not the greatest, but uh, I think here they will look pretty good, especially when we put the velocity stack on there. It's got a decent look there. They've got Pretty decent detail on the float bowls and, and you kind of have a blob here on the side that kind of represents the linkage and whatnot. And uh, it depicts a 600 CFM type Holly carburetor. And so we're going to be setting this up for the dual setup. And so what I'm going to want to do is I want to drill holes for the linkage and for the fuel line which would be on the side of the float bowl right there and the linkage is right there. I drilled out 
the linkage there for the wire that I'm going to use for the carburetor linkage, which is a pretty thin wire. It might even be a little bit too big. You can go with, uh, you know, take whatever wire you're going to be using for your linkage. You kind of want to match up the drill bit you have. I just have a drawer that has a collection of little drill bits, and I kind of, I tried to keep them organized and know what sizes I have but they, they end up falling out and being all over this little drawer I got so I just size them up the best I can but this is the tricky part I kind of started the drilling I got a little pilot hole going but I go ahead and just get it in the side there and start drilling in far enough to where you can stick your line that you're using for your fuel line and with a little dab of glue and that's what we need just get in there a little bit just so it's far enough to stick in there and try like heck when you're starting which I did <laughs> if I had the camera on you would have gotten to see a nice owie but you know you slip off and go right into your fingers that is just a part of model building if you can somehow do it safer by holding it with a pair of needle nose pliers like this and if you can do that, that's always better. It saves holes in your fingertips. But sometimes I can't really get the control I want doing this, so I just take the chances with my fingers. But for safety, because remember, we're safety first, always. Remember, safety first, kids. All right, so I want to put some paint onto the carburetors because I'm not really wanting to have chrome carburetors. I don't think it's going to look realistic to the type of car that we're building here. So I got some paint. I'm going to make these look a little more like that goldish or zinc look that uh, your average Holly carburetor that you would buy would have that look, you know. So how we would do that is first got to handle this thing, and it's kind of a little thing to put in your fingers and try to paint. So I'm going to flip it over onto the side that gets glued, take my X-Acto knife and just kind of stab it right here because again that's a glued area and you're not going to see it and bing look at that we're holding on to it and the paint that we're going to use today on the carburetor to get the look I'm looking for is testers metalizers burnt metal and it has this look to it that I think really replicates the color that the cast metal of the carburetors have so this is what we use and we shake it up a bit we're going to take a bit I like to get the paint that's up on the rim, a little bit of the really watered down paint down there. I'll put it right in the cap. We're just going to go ahead and brush it on. Just light strokes. Again, this stuff is so thin. What I like about it is the brush strokes just seem to go away with this metalizer because it's it just kind of self levels. There you go and it's all dried and you can see that it's just got a little bit of that gold tint to it. It's a little bit more grayish than I had hoped for. Sometimes you can mix a little brass into that and it'll it'll give you that, that look. But this is going to work fine. I just didn't want to have that chrome. And uh, we're going to move on. So thanks a bunch for watching. And we're going to get back here real quick. The next episode is going to be the next part on getting this engine all detailed. We're still doing a lot of shooting on this. So hope you learned a lot. Be sure down in the description below, I got links to my other channel. I've got links to my Teespring account where I still got those shirts. We've got the Mediocre Modelers group and the Model Car Hobby Headquarters group. Links down below. Get on that Model Car Hobby Headquarters group and post your pictures of your models. We'll get some more on the end of these videos. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. we got a lot more content coming about model cars. So keep gluing those fingers together and keep cutting that styrene. And we will see you in the next video. You can kind of let it flow into the... Oh my God. You can have it flow into the crevice a little bit and it's just best to get it in there once. So next I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint the oh my. oil filter here.